Hello everyone. Uh, today I am going to talk about uh, another group of antibiotics, uh, macrolides. Okay, so let's start. First of all, uh, the classification of macrolides, uh, it includes azithromycin, clarithromycin, erythromycin, telethromycin, and rosethromycin. Okay, so these are the drugs which are present in this uh, class. So, the macrolides, these are a group of antibiotics with a macrocyclic lectone structure, okay, which is a 14-member ring to which one or more deoxy sugars are attached, okay. These are basically macrolides and erythromycin was the first of these uh, drugs to find a clinical application both as a drug of choice and as alternative to penicillin in individuals with an allergy to beta lactam antibiotics. Okay, so these are the alternative medicines, and those individuals who are allergic to beta lactam antibiotics, penicillins, okay, and clarithromycin, it is a methylated form of erythromycin. What does it mean? That clarithromycin and erythromycin structure is same, both have lactone. 14 member ring but when we replace at position 6 the hydroxyl group with methoxy group so clarithromycin will be produced okay so we can say that clarithromycin is a methylated form of erythromycin so telithromycin is a semi-synthetic derivative of erythromycin and it is the first a uh, ketolite antimicrobial agent okay what are ketolites so ketolites and macrolides have similar uh, antimicrobial coverage however the ketolites are active against many macrolide resistance gram positive strains so this is basically the main difference that ketolites are active against many macrolide resistant gram positive strains okay Now coming towards the mechanism of action of macrolides. So these are basically protein synthesis inhibitors. The macrolides bind irreversibly to a site on the 50S subunit of the bacterial ribosome, thus inhibiting translocation steps of the protein synthesis, generally considered to be bacteriostatic, but it may be bactericidal at higher doses. So it depends on the dose okay so these are bacteriostatic but if we increase the dose so it may be bactericidal and this, these are basically the protein synthesis inhibitors coming towards the antibacterial spectrum okay uh, erythromycin may be used in patients with penicillin allergy Okay, as I told you that uh, uh, these are the alternative medicines. Okay, uh, when someone is allergic to penicillin, so these are the alternative uh, medicines. Uh, clarithromycin has activity similar to erythromycin, but it is also effective against Haemophilus influenza. Its activity against intracellular pathogens such as Chlamydia, Legionella, Moraxella, urea plasma species and helicobacter pylori is higher than that of erythromycin okay so this is basically the antibacterial spectrum of the clarithromycin and what is the uh, antibacterial spectrum of the azithromycin so azithromycin is far more active against respiratory infections due to hemophilus influenza and moraxella keterilis okay azithromycin is the preferred therapy for urethritis caused by chlamydia trachomatis so this is basically the spectrum of the azithromycin the coverage of the azithromycin that it is effective against h influenza and moraxella keterilis okay and it is also effective against chlamydia trachomatis, okay? And the 
preferred therapy for urethritis. So, if we talk about the telethromycin, tel uh, so telethromycin has an antimicrobial spectrum similar to that of azithromycin. Okay, mycobacterium avium is preferentially treated with a macrolide containing regimen including clarithromycin or azithromycin. Okay, so this is basically uh, about the spectrum of these drugs. Now coming towards the pharmacokinetics. Okay, so the erythromycin base is destroyed by gastric acid. Okay, thus either enteric coated tablets or esterified forms of the antibiotic are administered. Okay, so these are this drug is destroyed by the gastric acid. Okay, so uh, clarithromycin and azithromycin and telithromycin, these are stable in stomach acid. But the erythromycin, it is not stable in the stomach. So, these three drugs, clarithromycin, azithromycin and telithromycin, these are stable in stomach and are readily absorbed. Okay? But the erythromycin is not stable in stomach environment. So, food interferes with the absorption of the erythromycin and azithromycin but can increase that of clarithromycin this is very important so you should take this uh, erythromycin and azithromycin on empty stomach okay because food interferes with the absorption of these two drugs but food can increase that up uh, the absorption of clarithromycin. So if we take this clarithromycin after meal, so it will increase the absorption of this drug. Clear? So now erythromycin distributes will to all body fluids except the cerebrospinal fluid. But azithromycin has the longest half-life and the largest volume of distribution of all these four drugs. Okay? This this, uh, this azithromycin has the longest half-life. So, azithromycin concentrates in neutrophils, macrophages, and fibroblasts, and serum levels are low. It has the longest half-life and the largest volume of distribution of the four drugs. So, this was something about the azithromycin, okay? So, please remember that azithromycin has the longest half-life of these all four drugs. Now, erythromycin and azithromycin uh, are primarily concentrated and excreted in the bile as ectiodrugs. Okay? In contrast, clarithromycin and its metabolites, these are eliminated by the uh, kidney as well as the liver. Now, coming towards the adverse effects of these drugs. So, these drugs may cause uh, gastric upset, cholestatic jaundice, uh, autotoxicity, transient uh, deafness has been associated with erythromycin, especially at high doses. So, we should be careful about the dose of these drugs. Azithromycin has also been associated with irreversible sensor, sensorineural hearing loss. Okay? So, we should be careful about the dose of azithromycin also okay so uh, these uh, drugs also causes allergic reactions so these are some of the uh, adverse effects of uh, these drugs now coming towards the therapeutic uses of uh, these drugs so first of all we will uh, discuss the therapeutic uses of erythromycin so, this drug is used in mycoplasma pneumoniae, pertussis, diphtheria, legionary diseases, and gonorrhea, syphilis, endocarditis. Okay? So, these are some of the uh, infections, the diseases in which this erythromycin is effective. Now, what, what are the therapeutic uses of the clarithromycin? So, Clarithromycin is effective against organisms covered by erythromycin. This is very important. Please remember this. 
This drug is also very effective against Helicobacter pylori. Okay, and it is also effective against Staphylococci and Streptococci. It is also effective against pneumonia and sinusitis, pharyngitis, otitis media, toxoplasma, gondi, mycobacterium, avium complex, cryptosporidium species. Okay, so this is basically these are the therapeutic uses of the clarithromycin. Now, what are the therapeutic uses of the azithromycin? So, first of all, the non gonococcal infections caused by chlamydia, uh, urethritis, inflammation of the urethra, lower respiratory tract infections, mycobacterium, avium complex, uh, pharyngitis, uh, legionary disease, pelvic inflammatory disease. Okay, so these are some of the therapeutic uses of the azithromycin. Okay. So, now, what are the drug interactions? Okay, so erythromycin increases thiopylene accumulation in the body. Okay, so please remember this, that uh, thiopylene, it increases, uh, erythromycin increases thiopylene accumulation in the body. And erythromycin also increases the toxicity of uh, digoxin, corticosteroids, cyclosporine, carbamazepine, okay? So these are some of the uh, drug interactions. You should remember these drug interactions, okay? Now, coming towards the uh, doses of these drugs. So these are some of the uh, pharmacokinetics, the elimination route, half-life, administration route, and common dosage range for the adults. So erythromycin, uh, the elimination route is hepatic. The half-life of this uh, drug is uh, 1.2 to 2.6 hours and uh, the administration route is orally. The dosage range is 250 to uh, 500 milligram every six hours, okay? And azithromycin, the elimination route is hepatic and the half-life is 68 hours, okay? So it has the longest half-life in the macrolides cl uh, class, okay? And the administration route is oral. Uh, the dosage range is 250 milligram per day, okay? 250 milligram per day. Clarithromycin, clarithromycin, the elimination route of this drug is renal through kidney and the half-life is 3 to seven hours okay and the administration route is oral and the common dosage range of this drug is 250 to 500 milligram every 12 hours okay so these are something about the macrolides class now let's summarize this presentation what we have discussed today about uh, macrolides so First of all, we have discussed that uh, the macrolides is, uh, uh, class includes azithromycin, clarithromycin, erythromycin, telethromycin, and rosithromycin. Then we have discussed the uh, some of the uh, characteristics that clarithromycin is a methylated form of the erythromycin. Erythromycin was the first of these drugs to find clinical application. Okay, and these are the group of antibiotics with, with a macrocyclic lectone structure. And, and these are the drugs in which uh, the structure uh, is consists of lectone ring, which is a 14 member ring. Okay, and when the hydroxyl group in the erythromycin is replaced with methoxy group, then clarithromycin will be produced. Then we have discussed that telethromycin is a semi-synthetic. Uh, derivative of the erythromycin. Please remember this. And what is the difference between the ketolides and macrolides? So ketolides and macrolides have similar uh, antimicrobial coverage, but the ketolides are active against uh, many macrolide resistant gram positive strains. Okay. And the mechanism of action of these drugs. So these are protein synthesis inhibitors and it binds irreversibly to a site and the 
50 is ribosomal subunit. Okay, so these are the basically protein synthesis inhibitors. Then we have discussed that these are the alternative medicines uh, and those patients who are allergic to penicillins, okay, uh, the antibacterial spectrum. Then we have discussed the uh, pharmacokinetics, okay, that uh, food interferes with the absorption of the erythromycin and azithromycin but can increase that of clarithromycin. Okay, and clarithromycin, azithromycin, and telithromycin are stable in stomach and are readily absorbed, but the erythromycin is not stable in the stomach. Then we have discussed the adverse effects that it causes autotoxicity. Azithromycin has been associated with irreversible sensor renew renewal hearing loss. Okay. And it, these drugs also uh, causes autotoxicity, cholestatic jaundice, gastric uh, upset, allergic reactions. Then we have discussed the therapeutic uses of the erythromycin, clarithromycin, azithromycin. Okay. And uh, for clarithromycin, please remember this, that it is effective against organisms covered by the erythromycin. Plus, it is effective against helicobacter pylori bacteria, cephalococci, streptococci, it is effective in pneumonia, sinusitis, pharyngitis, otitis media, toxoplasma gondii, uh, cryptosporidium species, mycobacterium avium complex. Okay, so this is basically uh, the therapeutic uses of the clarithromycin. Then we have discussed the azithromycin uses. That is, it is effective in urethritis, uh, lower respiratory infections, pharyngitis, uh, mycobacterium, avium complex, etc. Then we have discussed the important uh, drug interactions that erythromycin increases the thupylene accumulation in the body. And uh, erythromycin increases the toxicity of digoxin, uh, corticosteroid, cyclosporine, carbamazepine. Okay. So, then we have discussed the doses. So, please remember this, that azithromycin have the longest half-life and the half-life of the azithromycin is 68 hours and the dose is 250 milligram uh, per day depending upon the condition, okay? So, and similarly, the erythromycin dose is like 250 to 500 milligram every six hours. Then we have discussed the dose of the clarithromycin, which is also 250 to 500 milligram, but every 12 hours and erythromycin every 6 hours. So please remember this. So this is the end of the this presentation. If you have any question related to this topic, you can please ask in the comments uh, section and I will answer to that. Okay. Thank you so much.